Once again, Allahu Akbar. Name is Abbas Tamori. Time, believe it or not, Sunday 12.15. Same day, this is the third consecutive videos coming to explain this blessed Masnavi of Baha'u'llah. I hope I'm okay on the number because I always am clumsy on the numbers. But this is to line 26, 27, and 28. Very interesting. Baha'u'llah in the line 26 says, خوش بیا ای تیر ناری در بیان خوش means nicely beautifully خوش بیا kind of like welcome come very nicely welcome ای means o بیا means come تیر is an Arabic word in Persian we say parande, in uh, Arabic they say teir, and has an e at the end, e means of. So, come nicely, welcome. O bird, teire nari. Nar means fire, nari means fiery. Teire nari, fire bird. Okay. Dar in bayan, utterance, and talk, in speech. So welcome, O oh firebird, in the utterance. Because we just said that Baha'u'llah says, I am going to burn these this whales of the holiness, these whales, the tabernacles of so-called holiness. How does he do it? He does it with the tail, the tail nari, the firebird says, welcome, come nicely. O Tere, O bird, Nari the fire, in the talk, in the speech. He says this, till, ta, namanad, not remained. Namanad means remain, namanad, n in the beginning of the verb uh, makes it negative, ta namanad, till not remained, vasf, with the e at the end, which means of. Vasf means descriptions, attributes. Vasf what? Attributes of hasti. Hasti means the entire existence, the creation. So, dar in mian, in the middle. So, the second line says, till not remain. The descriptions of existence of the or of the, the descriptions of the creations in the middle. Very peculiar. Baha'i faith is very, very peculiar in this fact that does not accept the middleman. The entire Baha'i faith, one of the evolutionary or revolutionary, whichever way you like to set it in, is that Baha'i faith tries in every level to remove the middleman does not accept any broker this is precisely why we do not have a priest Baha'u'llah said okay we need priest but not as a means between me and you no that does not exist which is basically priesthood a broker but he says you do need some kind of administrations for your affairs, because the Baha'is, you know, they should not have an accident, and if they have, somebody has to judge it. So administra administration of the Baha'i faith, it is not a democratic priesthood. It's actually a democratic judge between the people, to judge people if uh, their affairs, if there's differences, and essentially to coordinate, you know, uh, the work and activity of all the people together in some kind of administration so uh, the best fruit, the best result to come out. Essentially, turns the mass into a team. That's what administration is supposed to do. You remember all those Huxley says, the difference between mass and the team. Mass has no power. Team has. So, Baha'u'llah wants to take the mass of the Baha'is to create a team. That's where the administration comes. But administration is not a broker between you and God. Remember that, people. 
We don't have that. Baha'u'llah is very serious about that. Because these divines, these ayatollahs, these chacham, these lamas, these priests, they always try to stay in between you and God. Just like a real estate man. You can't see God, you gotta go through me. That is what Baha'u'llah does not accept it. In the social. But in many prayers, you know, including the one I translated for you, it's on the uh, on my website under the publication, under the uh, you know, tab prayer, you can see the part of that, it says that even the names and attributes, Baha'u'llah says, are a medium. Uh, it's, 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 a, uh, it's a preventing power between you and see the God. It says, get rid of the names and attributes of God. So, in this line, spiritually, it's very important. Baha'u'llah asks that Tayra Nari, which means that firebird, comes to his utterance because he does not want to be remained between the creation and its descriptions, some kind of a medium. He does not want the Vasfahasti, which is the description of the creation, to be in the middle. Get rid of it, he says. Go directly to God. Very, very peculiar, isn't it? That firebird, he wants to burn. What? This Vasf, which is the description. Like you want to go to London, you can read a book. What is the book? Because the description is, uh, you read how to go to London by that book and everything else. Baha'u'llah says, no, it's practical, he says. You don't need to read the book to go to London. Just take a ticket and go there. Have your own account of what London is. Not what somebody has written. It's what it is. You know. If you don't have your own account of the faith, you're homeless. If you don't know how to re reconstruct the nature in the form of this house, then you're homeless. You have to live in the nature and be susceptible to all the dangers. We know how to reconstruct the nature to build this house to live in it. The spiritual is the same thing. We cannot live in a rental homes. If I give you everything and you have no uh, description of your own or no understanding of your own, then you want to live in my own home that I built. I'm not a capitalist in the spiritual realm either. I'm not in the physical realm, but also in the spiritual realm. I'm not a capitalist. I'm not trying to build some kind of a forum, some kind of a description, so you all fall in love with it and you think that I am somebody. I am absolutely nobody, but a person who is in love with the truth and with Baha'u'llah. The only thing I want to have with people is friendship. Nothing else, okay? If I could get it, that's the biggest thing. So, he's talking on the to line 27. He says something very, very important. Oh God, this is, this is the problem. Big problem nowadays. He says, Pauk Kon, cleanse. Pauk is a Persian word. It's a combination of Kon. Kon means do. Do clean. Which means, in one word, cleanse. This, kal baha, the hearts, ye av. So kal baha ye, of the hearts, poor, full, full, hasad, jealousy, hasad. It says, cleanse this heart that is filled with jealousy. Oh God, jealousy is a big problem. Just three monsters, invisibles, jealousy, arrogance, and transgressions. I've described it that, you know, it comes from comparing yourself to others. You shouldn't. We're all unique. This is why all the phases are different. God purposely said that. So do not compare one guy to another guy. It is not working. You know. It is impossible. One cannot be comparable to the other one. Everyone has his own destiny. This is not a Borg ship. Okay. 
or the beehive were all different. So, no comparison, really. You can compare yourself with your past, but if you compare it with the other person, two things happen. If you see you're higher than him, become arrogant. If you felt your estimation is wrong, you're lower than him, you might become jealous. And if you want to do something about the jealousy, you become then transgressor and cruel. You know? Because jealousy is everywhere. The physical jealousy is not that bad. He has a house, I want a house. He has a car, I want to get a car. Social jealousy is worst. He's president, I want to become a president. They feel belittle. But social spiritual jealousy is one of the worst things. Oh God, the jealousy that exists among the so-called spirituals in all the religion, that has been the biggest cause of all the complication. In the Baha'is, they are the worst Baha'is for that. I haven't seen foreigners, Canadians, notice them, notice that in them. But among the Persians, I've seen that's very bad. I've heard a lot of accounts that within the universal laws of justice, all those workers, they're waiting to get appointed to be somebody. If one of them cannot and the others are, they feel defeated. This is a very, very crazy sickness, man. You know, these offices, these names means nothing. You know, it's all limiting you when they take you are this. When you're saying I'm an elder, then I'm limited. That's it. To what I can do under the elder. If I was not an elder, there's no limit for me. I accepted this limitation because Baha'u'llah needed to be done. Well, well you know, I have some crazy idea, but this uh, jealousy is a problem. Baha'u'llah says to God, cleanse this jealousy. How, how can I get cleansed? In the spiritual realm, it can. It can, it can. Abdul Baha says in some answered questions, well, the worst thing is lying. But it's like a coin. It could flip it over. If a doctor is just lies to the patient, oh, you're healthy. You're feeling better. That might invigorate, he says, the, the ill man, the sick man, to feel better a little bit. So that's not a lie, really. It's in a strategy. He said jealousy is the same thing. If you're jealous, oh, this guy is so close to Baha'u'llah, to God, I want to be welcome. That's what your realm is. Go right ahead. But if you bring it in the earth, say this guy, is, his name is a counselor, or that guy is a member of assembly, and this guy is a board member, and that guy is an assistant, these kind of a names that it comes be sure that it is material. Because in the spiritual realm, there is no rank. Baha'u'llah says the, the love is so hard, so huge in the spiritual realm that you can't find rank. I've, said, I've given that example before. Imagine you're in front of the Queen of uh, England, my favorite queen, and then, you know, you all call her your majesty, your majesty, because she's the royal, isn't it? All of a sudden, behind the scene, a little child passed by. He says, Grandma, Grandma. What happened? She's queen from those who are outside. She's grandma for the people who are inside. Baha'u'llah says, come in to the spiritual realm. You don't find no more God and no more servant of God. They're all the same. Baha'u'llah is a line that he's quoting the Rumi. He says, Motrebe eshkim zanat vaktasemao, bandegi bando chodao vandi sodao. I don't know how they translate it, I can't remember it. But the, the line says that, bandegi band, 
to be a servant is a captivity and to be God is a headache. That's what Rumi says. To be a God is a headache and to be a servant also is a captivity. Come into the realm of love, he says. That's what he says. The dancer and the singer of the love when it's going to this spiritual dance of Sema, this is what she's singing. That God, to be God, is a headache and to be a get rid of both. So in the Baha'i faith, if you're jealous about the spirituality, that today I want to get closer to Baha'u'llah, I have absolutely no jealousy. I am willing to bring all the people of the earth close to Baha'u'llah. All of them. I would love to see that. As they get close to Baha'u'llah, I'm not going to go far away. No. I had family members in there. Those who have been involved in teaching Baha'i faith, you know that. You never feel you're bigger than the person you're teaching. You're feeling more humble than that. You know, the bigger you get, the more humble you get. Persian then have a saying. They say a tree that has fruits, the branches are down, meaning they're humble. Because of the fruits, the branches are down, they're humble. So Baha'u'llah says, come into the spiritual realm. Cleanse this heart full of jealousy. Says, jealousy, jealousy. So, uh, jealousy though, I've explained. First of all, it's a mood that you fall into it. It's like window shopping. You see something behind the window. Then you keep going to that window to see that item. Now, you're no longer window shopping, you're just becoming the things that, admiring that. You're becoming a habit of seeing that things behind the window. You once feel jealous over something, this keeps going, then you become, it becomes a habit in you. Now, gradually, it becomes an ethics. You're going to say, this group of people, blacks are this, or whites are that, or Muslims are this, or Hindus are that. You try to stereotype and classify people. Once you go further more, say that I want to buy that item from the window. Then you're going to work for it. You put those bad ethics into action. Before it was that black people are bad. Now when a black guy comes to get a job, you don't give a job to him. Now you acted upon the ethics that became a habit and it was once just a mood. As a result of that actions that you did, you now have a serious problem because now you became a racist. Jealousy is the same thing. When you act upon, then you feel you're lower. So it is up to all of us. Try to beat this devil right on the very emotion. I said to people, if you have a million dollars and you can buy a Mercedes, don't buy it. Buy a Toyota, a small Corolla. You don't like your friends to be belittled by your material success. Maybe their wives or their husbands say, look, look at Joe, he has got a nice car, he has a nice house. You're trying to ascend from your younger friends. Then they will not become your friends. And they won't admire you because of your success. Actually, they don't. They start to feel either let go of you or feel jealous. And if this keeps going, as I said, it becomes deeper and deeper, it becomes a quality. So we should not make people jealous of any point. You know, what can I say? Baha'u'llah says, I find myself as utter nothing. He's not lying, he's telling the truth. How does he feel that? He really does. He's tired of being God. He wants to come back up with us. You see, enough said. The second hemistick of the line 27, he says, Na patkun, in kalp hao ye bi rasad. Not means real cash. You could simply say in English, I think it will be a good translation. It says, cash in this heart that have no eyes. You see. Na means cash, but it's also in dictionaries. It says that it's removing the skin, the whale. 
of these hearts that have no eyes. Rasat, uh, in here it means uh, eye. We have a word called Rasat Khane. Rasat Khane, uh, oh, what is the English word for it now? Does not, the word doesn't come to mind. Well, you know, they keep these big uh, telescopes on a mountain. Uh, what's the word? Anyways, when they look at the stars, Khane means the house. Rasat means uh, where the eye is in the house to look at the sky. So Rasat Khane means uh, where they do the astronomy. And the telescope is the eyes, the Rasat, you know. So Baha'u'llah says this horse, they have no eyes. You heard a lot of time, you have to look with the eye of uh, your heart. Not with the, you know, you have to have a heart to see this. That means you have to have an eye. So the heart of tells a rasat. They don't have a rasat. They don't have an insight. If you say the eye has a sight, the heart has to have insight. So without insight. B means without. Rasat means sight. Without rasat. Nachtkom means if it feels good for you to cash in this heart that has no insight. Or take the whale. And wail, and wail in hearts, these hearts without insight. They have heart but has not no, no insight in them. You see. And they have heart that is filled with the hasad. If there's hasad in there, then there's no rasad. If you have hasad, you have no rasad. Hasad does get rid of the rasad, which is the insight. You have no insight. So Alright, enough said. Let's go to line 28. It opens the two thousands of subjects. I'm not going to go too detailed. It, even this is going to take a long time. So, line 28. Tau ke bihu shawne ahdat e charim. Beautiful. Tau til dat bihu shan. Lethargic. Bihush means a person who's fallen fainted and conscious. Hush means intelligence. If you say Kam Hush means little intelligence, that means the guy is not fainted. But if you use B, which means without also, without Hush, without intelligence, the together the combination, B Hush means the person who is in the hospital is fainted, the fainted ones. Here is lethargic. Those are very lousy and lethargic. It says that the lethargic of Ahdat. Ahd is a Baha'i term. Very much. And it's used in two contexts. I'm going to use it in both contexts. Ahd, Persian habit. Ahd va misak. We always have. Ahd va misak means the covenant. Misak means covenant. So is Ahd. Ahd means covenant. It says, tilde lethargic of your covenant. That's what's Baha'i, is it? A Kelly, more generous one. Ham behush ayant. Come to the hush, which is the consciousness. Ayant, become. Ayant, hush ayant. The old word is behush ayant. Means get rid of the lethargy, become conscious. By what? Of Jaume Qadim, Jaume Chalas, the cup, Qadim is eternity, ancient cup, ancient Chalas, to bring them from this lethargic state into consciousness. Became a vibrant alive. All right, let's go back to this word again. It says, Tatil dat bihushan, lethargics. Of your covenant, at used as a covenant, but at also is a word that we use in the administration term. The dispensation is the. Let's go from the beginning, from Adam. We say cycle of Adam consists of five, six religion. It's called all cycle from Adam to Muhammad. It's one cycle. Baha'u'llah is the start of a new cycle after him comes. Many prophets that they would be the cycle of Baha'u'llah. 
The distance between the two prophets, two major prophets, two religions is called dispensation in the Baha'i faith. So when you say Muhammad, Islamic dispensation means the distance between Muhammad to Baal. Dispensation of you know, Christ is between Christ to Muhammad. A dispensation in the Baha'i faith is divided to several ages. We have at least three ages, you know. The heroic age, where Bab, Baha'u'llah, and Abdul Baha are apart. Then you have formative age, which starts from Guardian Shobi Effendi, comes to the uh, uh, Constitution and uh, of the Universal House of Justice, where the hands of the cause comes, and the elders of God. These five elders are a part of this formative age. They have to come that these formations of the Baha'i faith is completed. As I, as one of the elders, started this matter of guardianship, which once the Baha'is they come, as he wants to come to the hush, become to their consciences, then they will start the universal laws of guardianships, elected by the, amongst the women of the world, and then you have the two houses of universal house of justice and universal house of guardianship, which are like mother and father, you know, a pair, yin yang. You know what starts? Now the covenant, the formative age is over. Then we start into golden age. So the dispensation of the Baha'i faith, so far we know three ages, heroic age, the beginning, formative age, which is uh, the beginning of the end of it I started. And then we come to the golden age. But every age has also has different ad, an epoch, E-P-O-C-H, epoch. So the epoch of Bob, the epoch of Baha'u'llah, the epoch of the Abdul Baha, they create the heroic age. The epoch of Shogri Effendi, the epoch of the hands of the cause and the, the epoch of the elders formative age. Baha'u'llah, you know, you could say that, alluding to this fact that in this act, in this epoch, the Baha'is are all bihush, are lethargic, or generous ones. Bring them to the consciousness the chalice, from the ancient chalice. Mm. So for the jam, which is cup and chalice, you can ask that, what brings you to that consciousness? Not the cup, what's in the cup? The whole of the news, I was looking at the Book of Certitude. He says the wine of certitude. Those are thirst or the wine of certitude. But the actual word is cups. Kos. Kos Arabic mean cups. We as a Persian we think meaning cups. But in translation, Shogi Fendi says the wine. I made a research and I found out kas means cup in Arabic has actually four plural forms. Kasat, kos. Akus and Kos. So Kos, Akus, Kasad, there's four of them, anyways. But Kos in the plural form means also wine. So I drive from that to say Jam, which is Persian, not Arabic, as Kas, could be used to mean this chalice, ancient chalice, means actually the content into that. So you could say it from the wine, which is inside the chalice, the ancient one. As an ancient one, it's referring to the cause of God. So part of the cause has to bring the Baha'is into the consciousness. The Baha'i of this Ad, which is translation, Epoch. In this epoch, the Baha'is are not. You know, it's an interpretation. But Ad usually means covenant. In the Baha'i faith, though, when we talk covenant in Persian, everybody knows. We call it Misak. 
but we use in combination to we say at vamisak. Both means covenant. But at when you say the point in particular, you mean epoch. For the age we use asr. We say asre rasuli. This is heroic age. Ahd abha means the durations, the epoch of Baha'u'llah. Ahd a'la, the epoch of the Bab. Ahd misak, the ahd of misak means the ahd of Abdul Baha. The ahd means the misak, ahd of covenant. So the ahd has become a part of the covenant. The ahd misak means the epoch of covenant of Abdul Baha. So at in that way, but mind you, the word at to be a specifically meaning epoch is used by Shoghi Effendi. In the writing of Baha'u'llah, Abdul Baha has not been used. This is Shoghi Effendi who brings this um, uh, the revisions and these divisions. The cycle and dispensation, Abdul Baha has brought it up. But to bring down, to break down the cycle into the age and into, uh, uh, you know, epoch, okay, it is the word of Shoghi Effendi. So, it is nice, eh? This is this heart filled. All of it is my story. He says the firebird come into the talk. Let's get this middle, which is Vas, this broker. Let's try and be stay between you and the Baha'u'llah. A lot of administrators are like that. I want to burn them away, he says. Because there's Hasat, then there's no Rasat. When there's jealousy, then there's no insight. So this Hasat has to be cleansed. And this rasat, which is inside, this has to be, the heart has to be removed and masked, taken away, cashed in. So what the result would be that this lethargic of this epoch, of the epoch, of this epoch, oh, Karim, Karim is the generous one, the all bountiful. Come, they come to the intelligent consciousness. Do you know what is going on? From this chalice of ancient chalice, which is the cause of God. Elders are a part of the cause of God. Oh, Shabbat Effendi says, elders, they are, they're a specialist. They can interpret the writings, but essentially they're a human being. Meaning, watch them, they might just go down like everybody else. Um, there are things I guess God knows. I cannot say to Baha'u'llah no. I had a dream of the Baha told me that you are an elder and he yelled at me and says do something about it. I just don't have the heart to tell him no. Otherwise, I sincerely hate it. It's really the shit, isn't it? Why do I need this? My reality is right here, where it has no name and no title. It's just so easy to hide among the people. The moment you put a name on it, you know how many times I've been accused that I'm looking to be the leaders or specials, feeling a specials, you know, by the National Assembly, actually, they wrote a letter that you feel that you have an special role. I swear to Baha'u'llah, which I will destroy the planet if he orders me. Believe me, I will. I have accepted the eldership only because the cause needs it, and because he asked me to do it. But I truly hate it. Baha'u'llah hated to be called a manifestation of prophet, he quit to go. Those who have in them what it takes, they don't like to be limited by names. I'm one of them, brothers and sisters. But I'm going to have to say, I have to accept this jail, this dogma 
of definition of elder because only an elder under the provisions of this title can interpret and initiate this house of guardianship. You Baha'is, you can't allow, you're not allowed to interpret authentically. Universal House of Justice cannot interpret authentically as they said, as their writing says. So who is going to bring this up? There has to be an elder. And that is not why I said an elder. This is because Abdul Baha yelled at me and he seriously asked me to do it. Many of times that I want to do these things, including when I wanted to bring uh, the vision I had about what's going to happen to the planet. Uh, I consulted two other guys that these things are too horrible, horrible stuff to say. And uh, they told me not to, do, not to say those things. I waited two days when I was bringing that things is going to happen to the Muslim world. So I had a dream of Baha'u'llah, basically he told me that. Go ahead. So I said it. All right, we'll right up to the line 28. Not to continue uh, and extend this more than what I just said. Enough said about this. Thank you. Oh, Lord, my God.